בעזרת השם נעשה ונצליח, Welcome to our Omud Yomi Shior Daf Kuf Tes Omud Aleph, not exactly Omud Yomi, but we are still learning Shabbos, a little bit of a slower pace, but yeah, hopefully we're getting it right. בעזרת השם, this year is for the Hatzolo and Hatzloch of Kol Kol Hatzol, wherever they are. So basically, Kuf Tes Omud Aleph, Shior Lil Nishmas, my father, Menachem Ben Akiva, Uh, the discussion we had and in Kuf Tesamad Aleph, and we're right now at the very, very, very bottom of the page, the discussion was Refua on Shabbos is not allowed as long as it's nikah, significant, visible, that it's for Refua. Whatever you do is for health, medicinal reasons. But if it's not nikah, if what you do, what you eat, or what you do, seem normal, meaning something that's done by many people, even if they're healthy. It's not something uniquely done to sick people. Even if you do it for health reasons, it's okay. Right? For example, swimming. I'm not going to the other questions of swimming in Shabbos now, which are many. The discussion right now is, let's say you don't even want to swim. You just want to go and dip yourself in the water of the sea. You want to have some fun dip in the sea on Shabbos. Fun, fun. The question is, what happens if one is low in the sick? And he was told by the doctor to go to the medicinal place, something which is therapeutic, somewhere where it's healthy for him to do. For example, the Dead Sea is brought as an example. Today, rheumatism and psoriasis, people say go to the Dead Sea for back pain. So now we saw Brysa that seems to, contr- seem to have contradicted uh, uh, how we view the going to the actual sea, to the great sea, which means when it comes to, let's say, May Mishra, which are uh, water that really smell bad, it's the water that comes from the Pishtan, where you soak the, the flax, and it really smells bad. There, clearly, you can't just wash there. People don't wash there for fun. It's disgusting. They wash there only if the doctor really told them to do that, right? Desperate, uh, you know, take desperate steps. Or, for example, May Yama Melech apparently back then was not used only for fun. I don't know if the Lacha changed. May Yama Melech, May Melech, which is the Dead Sea, you call it in English Dead Sea, but the real name is the Salt Sea, right? May Melech, Yama Melech. You're not allowed to go there in Shabbos. Why? Because it's used mainly for coiling, for health reasons. That's clear. That's not the contradiction. The steer was regarding the Yamagodel. Yamagodel, the regular sea, the, the sea, Mediterranean, Etania, Atalia, Ashdod, Akko, yeah. As long as it run away from the missiles, yeah? So what? So you can actually go and swim there. Says one Bryce, it's okay to go swim there. That's considered normal. It's not something exclusively, you know, uh, uh, medicinal, therapeutic. And on the other hand, there was another Bryce, huh? and this was the this, the the first Bryce, actually, was saying, Lobayamagodo. The first Bryce says, don't swim in the Great Sea, in the Big Sea, in the ocean. And the second Bryce said, you are allowed to swim in the Yamagodo, Right? So that's, the question was, why? So originally the Gemara wanted to say, well, it depends. Rabbi Meir, regarding the status of the Yam, is it considered like Mikveh or like a Mayan? And we explained the differences yesterday. So Rabbi Meir says, all seas are called Mikveh. Mikveh Amayim, Koryamim. And what's Mikveh Amayim? Which is the great sea that was created in Maisa Bereshis? The great sea? Yeah. In other words, well, everything was created then. But Yamagod al Koryamim, there all the main Bereshis were Nikvu, yeah, were, were gathering, were gathered to the great sea. Therefore, Rameir says all seas are the same. Meaning, what Rameir says basically, although he talks about Tumma Vatara, that the great sea and the small lakes, they all have the same status. Yeah, they're all considered as mikveh. They're not considered as Zoichlim, they're not they're not, let's put it one day, they're not good for Zav, let's say. Zav can only go to the main to the Maimayan, to the spring. Not to the big sea, not to the Kinneret, and not to Lake uh, Erie or Lake Huron or Lake uh, whatever that is, yeah, uh, Illinois, whatever. Now, Rabbi says, no, Yamagodol ke Mikveh. Only the Great Sea is like the Mikveh, while the other seas are considered to be springs. Okay, so we see Rabbi Yudah differentiates between the Great Sea and the other seas. So, too, it will be also to go there on Shabbos, right? Why? Because on Shabbos and Achinami, the other seas are okay, they're normal. The Great Sea has a different status for whichever reason, so you shouldn't go there on Shabbos because it's a different kind of place. That's what we wanted to say. Rabbi Yossi's opinion is not so relevant for us. Now we're starting today's share. Allow me for one second. 
תוך כדי אלו גגמורי, מה סקיף פה רב נחמן ובר יצחק? רב נחמן ובר יצחק attacks this attempt for an answer. אימו דה פליגל עניין תומא וטרה, although I would say there are mayor and of Yudah, what do they argue regarding תומא וטרה, the status of מקווה, why? because of the פוסוק. I didn't go into it so much, the question is מקווה המים קור היומים, does it mean יומים? All seas are all the same, like Rabbi Meir, yom in plural. Well, the Rabbi Yudah said, no, the great seas, plural seas, because all the seas and all the rivers, eventually they all spill into the great sea. They just argued about the interpretation of the Pasuk that tells you about the first mikveh in the world. What do you call mikveh? All the seas are called mikveh. Kineret, Lake uh, Como, like whichever lakes, I don't know what. all the lakes in the world, or do we say, are the all the Yamim, or does the Pasuk mean, Mikve Amayim, the one sea, the big one, the ocean, the Mediterranean, they're called the accumulation of all seas. But that's only Pasuk to do with Mikve. It has nothing to do with what's normal or abnormal in the world of medicine. What does that have to do with it? We're learning Shabbos here. Praktish, when the doctor sends you to the sea, is that called something exclusively medicinal, medical, or not? What does one have to do with the other? It's Takashver. So therefore, Emo the Pligil in Tum of Atayra, they argue about Tum of Atayra, very nice. Lini and Shabbos, Mishom Aslu, did you hear them saying anything to do with Shabbos? And can we derive, yeah, what any information from Tum of Atayra regarding Shabbos? No. Ela Omar of Nachman Bar Yitzchak, therefore Nachman Bar Yitzchak is looking for an alternative answer for the contradiction, which stira did we have? The Great Sea. Can I or can I not go there on Shabbos? If I am going there for health reasons, But is it something visibly, clearly, uh, medical or not? So, look, Asha, it's not a chloikist between the Brises. How do ishtai, how do lo ishtai? Depends if he stayed there for too long or no. Says Rashi, lo ishtai, el arochatz, the yotza mutar. In other words, we're not talking about a guy who likes, you know, today people swim and they surf and they this and they go with a ducky. No, basically the idea is if you just go into dip, To refresh yourself, it's hot summer, no air condition back then. <laughs> you go to the sea to have a dip and refresh yourself, even on Shabbos or in Shabbos. So that's okay, because you're not overstaying your welcome. You're only staying there to dip in and out. And that's okay, you refresh yourself. And if that's what you do, even if your mind is for medical reasons, it looks normal. It looks, I want to refresh myself. Maybe you can say winter, summer, I guess in the summer it's normal, yeah? But she'en ke'en, ishtai is a problem. The b'risa that says you're not allowed if you stay there for too long. If you are, yeah, the second b'risa, the, yeah, the one, the b'risa that says that you are not supposed to go to the sea, yeah, uh, um, I, I changed over, sorry. Ishtai, the b'risa that says you're not allowed to go is if you stay there for too long. Why is things for so long? Huh? Why is things, everyone went out of the sea, why are you still there? Because you need your session, you need your therapy session. Oh, okay, so that's the difference. How long you stayed in the sea, that's the, that's the common, that, that's what divides the two brises. How did it explain the second brisa? Yeah, are you telling me that the second brisa, the second brisa is the one who said that you are allowed to wash in the sea because you didn't stay there for too long, right? The sea is okay according to the second brisa, right? If you're telling me that it just dipped in and out, what's lehishtahot? He didn't stay there for too long. He didn't linger there. I feel that Mishonami. Wow, surprisingly, even May Mishra, which were complete no-no in both prices, the May Mishra, the one with a bad smell, it says apparently we're going to see now that if you don't stay there for too long, it's normal to go there for a dip. I guess there was something good and fun about it, even though the smell... And then, therefore, it doesn't make sense what you're saying. Because this, if the Bryce is telling me that dipping is okay for the sea, it should also be okay for the Meimishra. Why? Datanya, look at the Bryce. By the way, I have some regrets about yesterday. Meitveria, I'm not sure if Meitveria is the Kinneret. Meitveria could be Hamitveria, because it's a big issue we're learning now in Iun. Meitveria, we remember from Daf Lametes, Daf Mem, they used to go there as a spa, as the hot springs of Tveria. I'm not sure what it means, but whatever, one of those. But Meitveria is always considered to be okay in our prices. It's not something for therapy. Everyone used to go there all the time. It was normal, normally done by everyone. Ube Mishra. Oh, listen to this. 
you are allowed to wash in Meimisha, Opa, Meimisha, those water, this water of the, the bad smelling water of the flax is okay. Ubiyamishal's dome in Sodom Sea, which is the Dead Sea, the Afil Bishesh Lachototim Roisha, it's getting worse. Even if he has all kinds of disgusting uh, wounds in his hand, in his head, like scabs, you know, all kinds of skin wounds on the head, it's still okay to go to these places on Shabbos. How come? So what does the price to tell me? A whole different business. If you go for a dip in Yama Melach or even May Mishra, don't ask me why. I didn't live in the times of the Gemara. Huh? But apparently to go for the May Mishra, even May Mishra and Melach, to go for a dip is always allowed. And yet the same Brisa said that the sea is not okay. It doesn't make sense what you're saying, right? Yeah, you can tell me that. <laughs> yeah, because now if you talk about dipping, and that's why the sea is okay, then the same Brisa that said the sea is okay should have said that the May Mishra is also okay. Because May Mishra is also okay for a few seconds. So where are you? Ella, now we're going to come to the final conclusion. Yama Godol, Ayama Godol, Loi Kasha. Yeah, we're having a new answer regarding the stira about the great sea, about uh, the ocean. Habiyofin Shaboy, Habiroim Shaboy. Oh, as we know, the sea has many different parts. Yeah, you have a nice beach, a nice blue water. I mean, clear, nice, clean, nice. So the nice water that's clean, my Yofim, why am I going there? Well, I'm going there for the fun. I'm going, I'm going because it's nice, because I want to just uh, have fun. Even with the Ishtahi, says Rashi, I'm having fun. Nice sea, nice clear water, amazing, clean, right? What do you care if I'm sick or healthy? None of anyone's business. It looks normal because it's such amazing, nice uh, water. So even though I'm staying for a long time, it's okay, right? The price that it says, don't go to the sea, definitely not go to the sea for a long time, is when bad. <laughs> You go to the sea, and the sea has bad water, yeah, unclean, all kinds of, excuse me, sewage is going there, like in some uh, beaches, unfortunately, in this country. Why are you going there? For a long time? You're going for a long time to this real low-class kind of beach. Why? Must be for health reasons. And that's why it's also... And that's the answer regarding the sea, even a long time. May Misha, I may Misha, not a Kasha. Now, regarding May Misha and May Misha, it's not difficult either, from the first Bryces to the third one, the bad water, which bad water? Any of them. The main Misha, and also actually the bad seawater, according to Ashi. If you go for a few seconds, it's okay. I guess you saw that <laughs> you go to the bad water for a few seconds just to dip in and go out, maybe minutes. I don't know exactly the sheer. You're not swimming, you're not starting a whole session there, you know, you're not uh, in the Olympics right now. You just go in there to dip, have a nice dip, go out. That's okay. Under any circumstances, even for the May Mishra or the bed water of the Yam. So either or. So the only time you're allowed to go for a long time is if you go for a long time to the clean water. To the dirty water, you can only go for a short amount of time. Yeah, Mercedes. Even if the person is sick and was told to go, my my mother in law, she was told by a doctor or my father, both of them, I think, they were told to go to the Dead Sea for bed back pain. Big, big uh, doctors told them to go to Yamamelech for the back pain. Yeah, even today. Yeah, the, the, the Dead Sea has a lot of, uh, you know, therapeutic uh, qualities. So are you allowed to go there on Shabbos? Maybe for a dip, not for any longer. Because Yama Melech is generally, is, no, the prices view Yama Melech all the time, but maybe Mishra. Yeah. Maybe today, maybe today it's different. Because today a lot of people go there anyways. I don't know. But if you conclude, the way the Gemara concludes Yama Melech, as far as, if you make, if you keep Cheshman, of all three brises, Yama Melch is always with, with Mishra. Oh, it's right. Yeah, no, it's not even right. It's not accepted to go there unless uh, unless the guy's sick. Yeah, it's not nice to go there. I mean, maybe some people like it. It's not. It's considered more like a therapy thing. Says the Mishnah. En oichlin, no Mishnah, oh, Shalom Aleichem. En oichlin is of Yon B'Shabes, the fish en machel brim. So now back to the old rule. Ezovion, we're going to learn what Ezovion is. Ezovion, you know what Ezovion means, really? Everybody knows about Ezoiv, right? You have it in Paraduma, in Metzoiro, right? Many times Ezov, is up in English, whatever that means, yeah? So the Ezoiv, you know, always imagine the three 
you know, three uh, stocks, you know, with three uh, small smaller ones coming out, as we'll say. Basically, something like a salary or something. And that Ezov is called Ezov Yovon, Ezov Yon, Ezov, the Greek Ezov, the Greek Hisop. You're not allowed to eat it on Shabbos. Why? Healthy people just don't eat that. If you eat that, that's only for met for you know remedial, only for health reasons. It's mamish like medications like taking Tylenol. Therefore, you're not allowed to eat it on Shabbos. It's not machel brim. You show everybody you're eating what medication, and that's not allowed on Shabbos. You become to grind. You are allowed to eat the kind of vegetable called yoezer. Soon you're going with that. You'll be surprised what yoezer is. The shoyse abu bua. You're also allowed to drink a drink called abu bua. We're going to explain what that means. It's not in French, by the way. Yeah, you're allowed to eat to drink it because those things are healthy, but not exclusively for health reasons, right? Although the doctor tells you, oh, you know, it's a remedy. Oh, you don't need any medications, any therapy. All you need is to eat a lot of, you know, to drink a lot of abu bua and eat your ezel. So I wouldn't have used it otherwise, but it's okay to eat it because normal healthy people eat it too, right? Now, as we just said, all oichlin, what kind of oichlin? All foods that are normal, normally eaten by normal people, by healthy people, a person may eat even though he's eating it personally for medical reasons. And he's allowed to drink all types of drinks. Chutz me made kolim, except for the water of the kolim, which the Gemara will explain what that means. And made kolim, the Gemara says it was like a, a Mayan, there was a spring that used to spring out between two kolim, two palm trees, and it had special, you know, medical qualities that you're not allowed to drink. The kois ikorin, the kois that is involved, Sama Rashi doesn't say what, ikorin are roots. Yeah, we have the ekois, some kind of drink made out of roots. Normal people don't drink them. People who drink or eat those, it's only because you are green. It's some kind of disease that, per that turns a person green. Maybe, I don't know, hepatitis, I don't know, something like that. People eat it for that, and normal people don't. So you're not allowed to drink it. Oh. That is now actually something interesting. The made kolim is not exactly, made kolim is borderline. The made kolim, right, they are therapeutic. However, they also really quench you very well. So those made kolim, if you're thirsty, you're allowed to drink them. Interesting. It's very, and if you're sick, you're not allowed to. In other words, they're like uh, fence sitters, the made kolim. Made kolim are, are kind of both ways. If you're healthy, normal. Yeah, you're allowed to drink them, let's say, because you're not drinking because you're sick, right? But if you are sick, you're not allowed to drink them. That's a made kolim to be discussed more later. The sachem and ikorin shalol refua. Another thing you're allowed to do, we spoke about ikorin, the herbs, now the, the roots. One is allowed to take shem and shalikorin. What's shem and the oil? Oh, oil somehow made out of, as we'll see later, or cooked together with the ikorin, with the roots. And you're allowed to smear it on your body, if not for medical reasons, this is not halacha. What's the prohibition of putting cream? The cream is not shemen. The cream is a bit hard, right? And when you do that, you're memarech. You're changing the form into something softer and, and then smoother. That's not allowed. But the shemen was always as soft, as runny as it was. Yeah, you're allowed to have some olive oil and smear it on your hands, as long as it's not for a fua. If your hands are dry and red and chopped, like it happens a lot in the winter, you're not allowed to smear the olive oil because that's refua. Yeah, unless it's killing you and you have to go to bed, whatever. Yeah. But if you stand on a smear yourself with the oil on Shabbos, that's fun. You have no inion of refua. It's runny. It's liquidy. You're not memorech. There's no refua. You don't take Why not? It's allowed. It's allowed. As far as I'm not putting a locho, as far as I know, it's allowed. Okay? Zog the Gemorim. I'm of Yosef. We're going to have a lot of uh, Aramaic translation today. I'm of Yosef. Ezoiv, we're going to differentiate, differentiate now between Ezoiv, which is the biblical Ezoiv mentioned in the Torah that's good for Mechatos and all that, and the Ezov Yon or Ezov Yovon, which is the healthy food which is only for sick people. Amav Yosef, Ezoiv Avarta Bar Hamag, Ezov Yon Avarta Bar Hinag. I don't know what's Avarta, Avarta this kind of, uh, of uh, vegetable, but basically, Bar Hamag means it's a zoiv that grows amongst the Hamag, the gemi. It's the one that grows amongst, you know where? The gemi, the reeds. You go to the reeds area, what grows there, 
the ezoy that grows there is the one which is kosher for mei hazo mei chatos paraduma. That's good. And the one that's not kosher for the ezoy but is okay for refua is the one that grows amongst the thorns. Higi, higi are thorns in Aramaic, right? Very good. Ula Oma, Ula says, Ula gives another opinion about the original ezoiv of the toiro that's good for sprinkling the Pora Duma on the Tommy person, right? What do you do? You sprinkle on the person three times. The person's to make mace. When Mashiach comes, we'll all need that quick, right? That will be the most sought after. <laughs> you want to invest in it now. Yeah, when Mashiach comes, you'll all need to be, to, uh, there will be a system of Pora Duma. He will sprinkle on us, or whoever will sprinkle on us, Paraduma. Paraduma water, yeah, with, with the Ezoiv. What is this Ezoiv exactly? You buy it in the Osher Ad. Omar, Marva Chivra, white Marva. I think in English it's also called Marva. There's, in Hebrew there's a thing called Marva. It's a, it's a spice. It's a leafy thing called Marva. White Marva, whatever that is. Marva. Good question. I, I think, no, I think I saw it once. I think it's a, there's a, it's a leafy kind of, a, of condiment called Marva. I think so. Ula ikla the of Shmuel Bar Yehuda. Ula came to the house of Shmuel Bar Yehuda. I saw the Marva Chivra. They brought in front of him the white Marva. Omar he reacted by saying, "Hi, nice of the Chitib I was so happy. Yeah, Ula was so connected to Torah. The second he saw that, he said, "Oh, this is written in the Torah. The white Marva, that's the one." Rav Papi Omar, Rav Papi argues on the previous opinions and said, "Shumshuk." In other words, that Shumshuk is the we don't know what that is, but the Ezoiv of the Torah is Shumshuk, and that's what of Papi holds. Omar Birmer Bidifti, Kavoset of Papi Mistaba. It makes sense to me that of Papi wins the argument. I think of Papi is right that Shumshuk is the halachic, the Orai Sadike Ezoiv. Why? That none, it says. Mitzvah Ezoiv. How should one use the Ezoiv when he wants to sprinkle the spritz on the Tome people? Shloisha Klochin. Kelach in Hebrew means like a thick stalk, Me meaning the way of that of that um, vegetable is you have three stalks connected to each other, yeah, and from each big stalk you have three leafy, you know, more like uh, softer ones that come out, right? It's like the celery a little bit, yeah. You have the thick one, and from each thick one there are three thinner ones that come out. The shumshuk and the shumshuk is the one. That fits that description. Shumshuk is the one that is three by three. It says agudas is oiv, and aguda is always three. That's what the Gemara says in Sukkah. Frek the Gemara, now the Gemara is going to go back to Ezovyoin. What's Ezovyoin? That's a kind of Ezoiv which is so healthy, you're not allowed to eat it on Shabbos. Lemai Achlele, what do people eat it for? In other words, what is it good for? You're telling me it's very medical, very good from the pharmacy. What do people eat it for? For which disease? Answers the one the kukaini. Kukaini are lolein, what happens to children also today. These are to loin shabdeimaim, worms in the stomach. Yeah, if one has worms in the stomach, he should eat the ezovion. Bemai achrile, how do you eat it? How does it work, the refua? Besheva tamri uchmasa. You have to eat it with seven dark dates. Take seven dates, dark, you know, check them for worms. I don't have worms. <laughs> So that, that helps you together with the Zavion that takes out the Toloim in the stomach. You might have you, Frank the Gemara, how come the people, children, people, how come they have bugs, I mean Toloim, the worms in the stomach? Answers the Gemara, Mekim Chadesa'ari, the Cholif Lalboin Yoimin. Somebody ground, there's a ground Kemach of barley, to begin with lower quality, and it's been out for 40 days. After 40 days, it starts being unhealthy. Worms, microbes, whatever happens there. Once you have 40 days, right, since it was nitran, since it was ground, that already starts creating all kinds of worms in the stomach. More medical stuff, says the Gemara, quoting the Mishnah. Your ezer is one that is healthy, but you are allowed to eat it on Shabbos because it's also eaten by healthy people. Mayo Ezer, what's your Ezer? Answers Gemara, Putnak. If you wonder what Putnak is, you know what it is? It's very simple. You know what's Putnak? It's mint. Nana, mint. To take mint leaves and eat them, we don't eat them today, we drink them in the tea, but mint leaves apparently are sometimes eaten by healthy people as well, and those mint leaves are good. 
So you're allowed to eat them because they're healthy, but not too healthy. You also have some people who like mint mint leaves to eat, to chew, whatever, and it's normal. Now, why do people eat it? What kind of disease is the nana, the mint leaves? What are they good for? Arakta Arakta is a different types of toloim, toloim in the liver, the COVID. If one Olenu has problems with the liver, toloim in the liver, then the mint is good for the liver disease, the liver um, worms. Vimai achlilo, how do you eat it? What do you eat it with? What's the the rest of the dish? What's a side dish of that? Says the Gemara, Besheva Tamri Chivarta, as opposed to the previous one, seven, seven uh, black dates. Here you have to take seven whiter dates, yeah, clear dates. That's good for that. Mimai Havya, how come people have those worms in the liver? What are they created from? Too much alcohol? No. Mi umtsa umaya aliba rikono. From umtsa is like steak, you know, a good piece of meat with water. Ali barikana over empty heart, which in English is called empty stomach. Empty stomach, right? You're hungry. And the first thing you eat, instead of eating something lighter before, like vegetable fruit, you right away eat the big steak with water. Some people say it's not healthy to drink water during the meal, right? So they say, yeah, that's one cause for the toiloim in the liver. And also another cause, umibisra shamna ali barikono. Also from fat meat, not the steak, from fat meat, also eaten on an empty stomach, also from the meat of the toll, the meat of the ox, ox meat, very heavy, to eat that on empty stomach is unhealthy, you may get the toloim in the liver. And another one, another cause, if you eat nuts, you eat nuts, another type of protein, and you eat it over empty stomach, not good. Another one, another cause, another cause, Umegiri de rubia ali barikono. Also, giri de rubia basically is the kalulav of the tiltan. Tiltan is fennel. Right, right? The, the Canadian flag is fennel, right? Yeah, tiltan. Fennel, the fennel, yeah, if you take the lulav, the fennel apparently has something like, it's not like lulav of sukkahs, it's a lulav that lulavig fonim. I think it means like some kind of like, um, some kind of leaf that looks a bit like a lulav, but much smaller. Of the fennel vegetable, I don't know, of the fennel herb. And that, if you eat that over empty stomach, unhealthy. And if you drink water right after eating the fennel, unhealthy, and causes you in the liver. Now, so what do you do for that? You eat the mint leaves, or yeah, you suck them, you eat them. Let's say it doesn't help. Let's say you don't have mint. Or let's say you tried and it didn't help. What's Plan B, leave la tachli chivata. You should just swallow shachlaim that are white. You should eat the shachlaim. Shachlaim is a kind of veg, a kind of leaf. Again, it's a herb called shachlaim because it's similar to the woman's ovaries. Ovaries shachla. It has a similar shape. If you eat that, you get healthy. The toloim are going to run away. Veiloi. Let's say that doesn't help either. What's plan C? Lative betanisa, you should, you know, be in tainis. Don't eat for, I guess, a day for a while. Velati bisra shamna and get fat meat. Velish diagumri, throw it on the barbecue, on the coals. Velimits garma, and now when it's nice and ready, you should suck. Don't eat it. Don't chew it after the tainis, but you should suck the suck some kind part of the meat. Take a piece of meat, ever yofe. And just suck the the meat into your mouth like that. You suck the fat, and then the ligmachala, and drink some vinegar, and that would kill those. So the fat of the meat after you're hungry and you suck it, plus the chaymets, the 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 vinegar that kills the toiloim in the liver. Veikadami. Some say chalaloi. Some say don't don't take don't intake the vinegar. Because it's going to root the liver itself. <laughs> yeah, in other words, you should also know. What? We're, we're pet. We don't know. It's some. Um, that's as uh, We don't know what it means practically. In any event, and we're a little bit past that point in the sugya. Which means what? Just like you kill the, the, the worms, you're also going to kill the, the, the liver itself. I wonder if it's because, you know, choymet comes from alcohol many times. You know, alcohol is not good for the liver. Maybe it's because of that. Maybe. 
And let, even that doesn't help. Plan D. Ooh, a lot of different medications for those taloim in the stomach. No, in the liver. Velo, if that even that doesn't help, what's the next plan? Leiti guda da sinta. Guda is legared. In other words, take the 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 small pieces of bark, bark of the tree. What's a sinta? Sne. The sne. I don't know what sne looks like, but Moshe Rabbeinu does. The sne, like the one Moshe Rabbeinu. Sne usually means like a bush. Take the mm. take the 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 kiluf, basically the chopped pieces of bark from the sne. The gridam iloi letatoi. Make sure when you chop it, when you peel it off piece by piece, make sure you megared, you peel it off from the top to the bottom. Don't peel it from the bottom to the top. Why? Because then the toloim will also come out from the bottom to the top. The toloim will come out through your mouth. Instead of the toloim coming down through the, you know, where the toilet, just like you, you basically peeled it from the bottom to the top, the toloim will also come from the stomach all the way through the mouth, kind of unpleasant. So don't do it that way. Now, all that is not enough. You have to take those peels of the bark of the snake and you have to cook it in beer. So I guess alcohol is good for that. You cook it with a shikha with some kind of, you know, brew, like beer, where beshivavi. There are a few explanations. I should say beshivavi by the neighbors. Don't cook it yourself in your own house. If you have the, this is very holy stuff, beshivavi, do it by the neighbors, not in your own house. Because in your own house, yeah, the smell will be too much for you. I don't know if it will be good or bad, but she says beshivavi, Koshaloi. Kosha sounds, you're not going to like the smell. Yeah, in other words, the smell will be bad for you if you happen to have liver worms to so do it somewhere else, but the shiva is the neighbor. When you finally drink it, what should you do? You should block the persons, the patient, they should block his orifices. Basically, yeah, oh, close his mouth. Not his mouth, not his to drink. You should close his like this, nine. You know, that will close your ears, close your nose. In other words, so all the power will be contained inside. And you have to drink it, you know, one shot and everything else is closed. So you have a strong intake of that medication. The lishti and drink it. The chimefani, now when you have to go to toilet, you know, after you get, because eventually we hope those nasty toiloim of the liver will come out. You should be mefani apshicha de dikla. You should be mefani on a stump. Yeah, on a cut piece of, of stump of the tree, of the decal, of the um, of the palm tree. So the Achronim already say, I understand it for us, we're so used to modern medication, which is obviously perfect and flawless. <laughs> so back then, Nishta Nuatvoim, Tosa says in the, of the Zoro, the Daf Chof Aleph, I think he says the Teva is different, or Chof so he says, but Lamaisa, you know, these are good medications for a spiritual and physical thing. Today, we changed. It never changed. So the Chronim say not to try these medications at home because we are too low to accept them. We're different. Back then, it worked. And now it doesn't because, because of our very healthy lifestyle. Coke, white flour, psh, sugar all the time. How advanced we are. Psh, unbelievable. Modern medicine and modern uh, way of life is mamish top of the world. Right there. How is white sugar legal without more, you know, taxes? I don't know. It's interesting. Mamish poison. Vishoitin Abu Burua. My Abu Burua. What is this drink called Abu Burua, which is healthy, but not super healthy, and you are allowed to drink it on Shabbos? Chumatria. You don't know what Chumatria is? Really? My Chumatria. What's Chumatria? Says the Gemara. Chutra Yechido. Something interesting. This is water that was cooked with, you know what? Tree, something from the tree, which is which grows just one tree, one trunk with no branches. I've never seen such a tree. Maybe they do exist, yeah. It's a tree that has no branches. It's a tree, just grows upright, just a trunk, nothing on the side. Maybe Google it if you have time. I don't. Yeah, you have one tree, one trunk, Libo Elashamain. This kind of tree, yeah. Yeah, part of it does have leaves. No, no, no. I'm talking of the ones who only has the trunk. Yes, yeah, such a tree. I'm sure if you look for it, you'll find it somewhere in uh, wherever, I don't know, southeast Brazil or something. Yeah, so basically, such a tree, the water that you cook that, that tree in, that is good for, for what? For what? Lemai Avdilo, 
what do they give it for? What would the doctor prescribe it for? Because it is medical, meaning it's not exclusively medical, but sick people do drink it. Why? Legiluya. What's Giluya? If one drank by mistake the water that was revealed and uncovered overnight, overnight, even today, overnight, you have water that's Megule. Back in the times of the Gemara, if you have water or honey or, or uh, wine that was covered even for like literally a few seconds, uncovered, it was uncovered, sorry, thank you, revealed for a small while, the snake came and put his heiress, his venom in it. There was always a big chashash. Today, the mechloik is the gon, shlochanoch, does apply, does apply, lo mshane. Lamaisa, there is chashash, if you drink this water, you may have a little bit of venom in your stomach, and what helps you is to drink that chumatra, that, you know, that uh, tree, I'm just thinking out, the tree looks a bit like a snake, no? Because it only has one, uh, no, certainly like one body, doesn't have any feet, and like the snake itself, doesn't have any extremities, maybe. Veiloi, and if it doesn't work, you try that tree business, or you don't have the tree around you. I've never seen such a tree. Let's say a guy ate megule. What should he do? What's the plan B medicine? Leiti chamisha clearly. He should bring five leaves of the rose, five roses. Broad, no leaves. Could be five roses, mamish. The chamisha kusta de shikra, and five cups of shekha, or five cups of alcohol. Let's say beer. Venishlukuni ba adodi. And you should cook them together. Some people eat, you know, this part of this, right? Rose, uh, yeah, some people eat uh, roses. It's edible. Yeah, badi adodi. Cook them together, the sheikha with the roses. Add the kaima anapka until it cooks so much, until it until it's concentrated and it goes down to the level of nap, nap is revis. Revis, same revis, kiddush, of dollar, revis, level of seder, 86 cc, 150 cc. Like a cup, mi cup. And then vinishti. And should drink it, and then that's good. So in case you drink megulim, take roses, five roses, five cups of shechar, cook them a lot until they, you know, kind of shrink, and then drink one revis, and all is good. Story time. Imei the Rav Achdevoi Ami, the mother of Rav Achdevoi Ami, she had an alternative way to do that. Of the Lalo Gavra, she there was a guy who was sick who drank from the from the uncovered water. And she prepared him the medicine in a different version. What did she do to him? Chad Klila, she cooked one rose, the Chad Koisa de Shikra, meaning a fifth of the of the of the optimal uh, amount. Shalko, she cooked it, Vashikite, and she gave him to drink from that one rose and one shekhar cup. The Shagra Tanura, she lit the tanur. Yeah, she set up, she lit the the tunnel, the, the oven, the garafte, she raked out the poles, but vite leventa begave, she placed inside the tunnel, the tunnel were big, she placed a brick inside and he sat on it, says Rashi, yeah, and he actually sat inside the tunnel and she prepared a brick so he should sit on, she shouldn't burn. She made it possible for him to be in a very, very hot place, right? And then, and then eventually, the the water, when he threw up, excuse me, when he vomited the venom of the snake, it went up straight like a lulav. Yeah, like a hutza, boom, like one, yeah, like one shot. Yeah. That was another solution. Ravavia says another solution for that disease of drinking from the venom. You should have a revis of what? Of milk? Of a goat. Goat's milk is healthy. From a white goat. Dafka white goat. Milk from a white goat. A revis of that. That's all you need. Much simpler, right? That's all you need if you drink from a megulim. Ravuna Ravuna Yudah gives another solution for the for somebody who drank from Megulim, he said, Leiti esroiga chalisa, bring sweet esrog, chalisa sweet, sweet esrog, velechaike, carve it out, carve a space in the esrog, velmalik duvsha, fill it with duvsha, basically stuffed es- stuffed chicken, stuffed esrog, stuff it with honey, velut vabey milili denura, and place it with the alaish, place it in the, with the gecholim, milili are the gecholim, the, the coals, Right, right, she says, hot coals, hot coals. And what do you do? And you should eat it like that. And that esrog, which is sweet and full of honey, you eat that, 
once it's like nicely roasted, roasted esrog with honey. Sounds nice, actually. You eat that, and all the venom comes out. Uh, no, that's a new statement. I would stop here. Okay, we're holding on Rabbi Hanina, and I'm holding by having to go to my Arif. Thank you very, very much. Important announcement, Svi, Svi, and anybody who else who listens to us, tomorrow's Wednesday night. I will not be here tomorrow night. I apologize. I try not to, uh, you know, um, and I don't think you're going to be here either. So unless a miracle happens, there's no sure tomorrow. Amazing apologies, unless one of you wants to take the slack. Also, but I'm going to Shabbat, which we're making for Anis. I can't miss you. I'm making myself. And uh, there was no way out, out of it. So uh, I'm sorry. So tomorrow there's no share. Real, real uh, apologies. So stay with us. People on tour anytime. YouTube should watch us when? On Thursday night. The last week of the year. Wow. Thank you very much to everybody. Thank you for coming. Full house. Amazing.